What you see on your screen right now, that's a pretty typical Wi-Fi router. The closer we are to it, the Wi-Fi service is great. But in this building, sometimes the speed gets really slow the farther you move away from the Wi-Fi router, and sometimes there's no Wi-Fi at all. Hi, welcome to our channel all about home electronics. In this video, we're going to show you how to boost your Wi-Fi signal and make sure you have more coverage in your building simply by adding a second Wi-Fi router and changing four or five settings and then simply connecting the two routers using a computer cable like this. If you have wall outlets, great, and if you don't, you just have to connect the two with the cord. In this diagram, we're depicting a fairly typical Wi-Fi router here. And as you move away from the Wi-Fi router, you'll either have very slow Wi-Fi and in many cases, no Wi-Fi. So by adding a second router to your existing Wi-Fi router and placing that router in the zone that has no Wi-Fi, you boost the speed and coverage of your existing Wi-Fi. To begin, you'll need to know the IP address of your current Wi-Fi router and the IP address is very easy to determine from any computer that's already hooked to your existing local area network Wi-Fi router. If you're using a Windows-based system, simply type in the words Command Prompt in the Start menu and press Enter. A window like this will pop up. Now you need to type one word spelled I-P-C-O-N-F-I-G, IP Config, and press Enter. Now you'll notice some data pops up. And if you look down here at what is called the default gateway, it tells us the IP address in our example is 192.168.2.1. Write that number down. Click the link at the top right of this video and it will show you how to obtain your default gateway IP address from a MacBook. Next, from a computer that is no longer connected to that Wi-Fi router, connect your secondary Wi-Fi router to a computer using the computer cable. Connect it to one of the available ports. Don't connect it to the internet port. And also, plug in your power. I open a browser on my computer and I'm inputting the IP address for the secondary router I'm using to boost my existing Wi-Fi signal. And I input the address for this particular router, which is 192.168.1.1. To access the setup page, I need to type in my username and password. If yours has been left to factory default, we recommend that you update this to something secure. In our example secondary router, we automatically land on the basic setup tab page. Now we're going to show you five settings you need to adjust, at least with this particular router. And we highly recommend you follow the adjustments in the order we show them. If you go out of order, you risk disconnecting your router from your computer. You then have to factory reset and that would be frustrating because you have to start over. The first setting we're going to adjust is the SSID, which is under the Wireless Basic Setup tab. Now, the SSID is nothing more than a technical name for what's the name of your Wi-Fi. So what you want to do in the Network Name SSID field is you want to put in your Wi-Fi name. You want to match lowercase to lowercase, uppercase to uppercase spaces. You want to make it perfectly identical. And for example purposes in this video, I'm just going to type in my Wi-Fi name goes here. And then scroll down here and save settings. Setting number two is we need to adjust the Wi-Fi security and password. Now, your existing Wi-Fi router probably has a Wi-Fi security mode. In this example, we're going to use WPA2 Personal. And in the paraphrase blank, we're going to type the password exactly how our existing Wi-Fi password is typed. 
matching uppercase to uppercase, lowercase to lowercase, symbols, numbers, dashes, etc. It must match perfectly. Once you put your passphrase in or your password, click on Save Settings. The third setting, we go back to Setup and Advanced Routing on our particular example router. And we need to disable NAT. Currently it's enabled. We're going to click Disabled. NAT is a network address translation. So it takes an address from the World Wide Web and it converts it into an IP address that's part of your local area network. Scroll down and save changes. To change the fourth setting, we're going to move back to Setup Basic and we're going to assign our secondary router a brand new local IP address, which is right here. As we mentioned at the very onset of this particular segment, it was 192.168.1.1. However, our primary Wi-Fi router is 192.168.2.1. So, we're going to modify this to a 2, and we're going to take this 1, and we're going to also modify this to 2. So, rather than it being the first device in our network, like our existing Wi-Fi router is, it'll be the second device in our network. And the fifth and final change is we want to disable the DHCP server. What the DHCP server is, your primary Wi-Fi router, it's how assigns an IP address to any device you add to your local area network. Because that function's being performed by our primary Wi-Fi router, we want to disable it in the secondary. Scroll down and save settings. Now all we have to do is connect our secondary router to our existing Wi-Fi router using that Ethernet cable we showed. And the final step, now we're looking at the back of that router that we reprogrammed to become a booster to our existing router by becoming an access point. We took that cable and we hooked it into one of the available ports num numbered 1 through 4. Do not plug it into the internet port. And then plug the other end of that cable into your existing Wi-Fi router into one of the available ports not the internet port, just plug it into port 1 through 4 or 1 through 6. Or if you have a local area network in your building and you have a working jack, plug it in there. That's assuming that that jack is connected to your existing Wi-Fi router. And then of course you'll have to power this up. This concludes the video how to boost your Wi-Fi signal by adding a second wireless router access point. If you have any questions, please post them in the comments below the video. Here are a few video links we hope you might find useful. If you like this video or it helped you, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe free to our channel. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.